Hello and welcome to our final live stream of the London 2022 Entertainment Memorabilia Live Auction. I'm Sean. I'm the Director of Operations here at London and I'm looking forward to spending the next uh, 20 minutes or so with you taking uh, talking you all through a select special few items. I must start by saying that this is a mere fraction of what we've got to offer between the 3rd and the 6th of November. If you haven't already, why not? Uh, if not, you really need to check out propstore.com forward slash live auction and while away a good few hours checking out what we've got for you this year. If you have any questions at all while I'm chatting away, please send them through. Uh, if we don't get to them today, we will be sure to answer them as soon as we can after the stream. So let's kick off. I do love a clapperboard. Can you get anything more synonymous with the filmmaking process than a clapperboard? That black and white slate, which gives you such a satisfying snap when you clap it together. I'm not gonna do it today, um, but it is truly uh, one of the most iconic pieces of kind of film creation. Uh, you can see the director, Richard Donner's name there, right at the front. Um, he's noted for quite a wide body of work, ranging from The Omen to Superman and The Goonies. Uh, all very similar films, obviously. Um, and then next to that, we've got the director of photography, Gilbert Taylor. Uh, and he actually grew up not too far away from where we're filming right now, which is quite nice. Uh, this little piece uh, has an estimate of about six to eight thousand pounds. Next up, another classic 80s, we have got a set of nine promotional stills from Ghostbusters. That's a beautiful collection, there's nine there, um, and it's got some really key memorable moments, like from the, the courthouse and the four main stars together in the set. Uh, it's Ghostbusters obviously uh, well revived recently after the success of the 2021 Afterlife sequel and rumour has it the next one will also star Ernie Hudson again as Winston which is very exciting to hear. Uh, this one has uh, more of an entry level estimate um, and that's estimated at six to eight hundred pounds. Now, by order of the prop store, I'd like to introduce you to Gina Gray's Lighter from the massively popular Peaky Blinders series. Uh, there's a memorable scene in season six where Gina lights a cigarette after a call that essentially greenlights an attempt on her husband Arthur's life. Uh, it's a beautiful little piece. Um, it's made of brass with a lovely marbled orange plastic shell. Uh, and again, one of our um, lower end pieces uh, priced at between 600 and 800 pounds. Now, this one here, hopefully anyone who is watching will appreciate that, that essentially these license plates say J Bond. So whilst not strictly from a TV show or film, the desirability of this piece is undeniable. By winning this lot, you have the rights to drive around the UK with this as your license plate. Uh, if you're a Bond fan, why not tell the whole world about it? Um, it is worth noting that the last kind of Bond related license plate of this calibre, which was JB007, sold in 2015 uh, for almost a quarter of a million pounds. Uh, this one is estimated at about eight, uh, eight, sorry, 80 to 120,000. Now, I want to take a moment to talk to you all about screen matching. Um, some of you may know what that is, uh, but this thing here uh, is Marty McFly's poncho from Back to the Future 3. So screen matching um, is the holy grail of prop collecting in a way. Uh, productions make multiples of costumes and props, and it can be really hard to pinpoint if something was used in that precise moment in the film. So with something as kind of <laughs> rustic or unique as the weave on this poncho uh, or blood spatters, that kind of thing, you can actually take a look and match up really specific points. So we've got some great images on the screen now. So there's a really good promotional still of Michael J. Fox uh, and there are some like, imperfections, some bobbles, that kind of thing. Um, and there's some other scenes in the film as well that we've managed to screen match it too, which is fantastic. Um, for more examples of other items in the auction that screen match, please do visit propstore.com slash live auction and we have a full gallery on there as well. I do love the, con the uh, continuing play uh, on Marty having identified himself as Clint Eastwood in the film. Uh, this poncho is actually based on the real Clint Eastwood's poncho worn in by his Man With No Name character from the Dollars trilogy of films. Uh, fantastic Back to the Future piece uh, and quite rightly has an estimate of 60 to 100,000 pounds. 
Ah, number five's alive. We have this cute guy down here. This is a model miniature Johnny Five robot with glider. Uh, so he's got wires inside, so we believe he was remote controlled, um, made for a scene where he flies through the air. It's pretty hard to make a full-size robot fly, uh, so obviously a miniature was made. There we go, you can see the, the glider on screen there. Uh, we do also have a full-size Johnny Five robot in the auction uh, from the first film, which is currently stored in our Los Angeles facility, though this one will be a lot easier to display for uh, most collectors. Um, this lovely, really visual piece um, is estimated at six. 60 to 80, uh, sorry, 40 to 60,000. <laughs> bit of a slightly different one, a uh, piece of music memorabilia. Uh, we have Elvis Presley's gun license application. So it's been very well documented that Elvis was a bit of a gun nut, had a vast collection of firearms, was fascinated with them by, from a young age, um, would insist, insist on being armed wherever he travelled in the US. So as he went around every state he visited, he would file uh, the relevant paperwork. Uh, in the 70s, apparently he'd carry a pair of Derringer pistols on stage in his boots because uh, he was a bit paranoid, um, which is just quite an insight into uh, the King of Rock's life. <laughs> on one side of this card, uh, it's been stamped with the date, uh, October 30th, 1970, and states that Presley was permitted to carry a Colt 38 revolver and a Beretta 7.6 automatic. You may know what they are. Uh, and it also has a full set of his fingerprints. Now, only one other complete set of Presley's fingerprints is known to exist, making this lot incredibly rare. It's uh, quite a fascinating and unusual item related to one of music history's most significant performers. Uh, and because of that, the estimate for this is about 40 to 60,000. I was a Harry Potter child, uh, so this is uh, definitely high up on my list. We have an uncorrected proof copy of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Uh, a lot of attention is always drawn to the first editions that, uh, that are sold, of which we do have one in our auction. Uh, but this one is one that was basically sent to publishers, reviewers, bookshops and influencers to create a real buzz uh, around a book prior to publication. And obviously it did a very good job uh, because look where we are sort of 20 years later. Uh, approximately 200 of the proof first edition would have been published. Uh, and interestingly, this does have a small error on the title page uh, with J.K. Rowling's name misspelt as J.A. Rowling. Uh, so a little less desirable from the, than the first edition, probably. Uh, this one's estimated at thirty to fifty thousand. I don't know about you, but whenever I think of Wonder Woman, I think of the braces, the lasso, the armor, and of course the tiara. And we do have Gal Gadot's tiara from the twenty six uh, sorry twenty seventeen Wonder Woman. Uh, what's even better is that this prop actually comes with a Warner Brothers Certificate of Authenticity, which is some of the best provenance and paperwork that can actually come with uh, a piece of film memorabilia these days. It means we know exactly where it came from, it has been released into the wild with Warner Brothers blessing, um, and we are offering it to you uh, next week. Uh, the estimate on that is fifteen to £25,000. Now, we couldn't have a music auction without something from the Beatles. So here, uh, just down there, <laughs> we have an autographed copy of A Life with the Beatles booklet signed by all four of the Fab Four. Um, they were originally obtained when the Beatles performed at the Odeon Cinema in Llandudno in Wales uh, in 1963. Uh, it's been signed uh, in blue ballpoint by all of the for uh, an edition. Uh, Paul McCartney has actually signed an inside page and Ringo Starr has autographed the back cover as well. Um, one of our more modestly priced, priced Beatles pieces. Uh, this one is estimated to go for about £10,000. Ah, this guy behind me here. Uh, we have a full-size light-up New Paradigm Strategist Dalek. Uh, Doctor Who, very exciting at the moment. We've had a sneak peek as to what lies for us in 2023. Uh, but the wonderful thing about this lot is that the funds raised will be donated to BBC's Children in Need charity. So if you're in the UK, you'll know what a worthwhile cause that is. 
but a little bit about the actual piece itself. Uh, so these guys were introduced in season five of the new series of Doctor Who, the Matt Smith era in Victory of the Daleks. Uh, they were very much redesigned. Uh, ultimately, the fans didn't really approve uh, and it was retconned and they reverted back to the much more traditional uh, design that we see of the Daleks. Uh, the bulbs on the top do illuminate. Uh, I think we've got a picture for you. Yes. Uh, and uh, like I said, the best part is that funds raised will be donated uh, to children in need, along with a bunch of other Doctor Who lots in the auction. So this guy's estimated at eight to 12,000, but we do have other ones in the auction as well. As a child growing up in the 90s, this has got to be possibly my favourite piece in the auction. I've lost count how many times I've seen Jumanji and it never gets old. So other than the actual board, I think that these game pieces and dice, for, for me anyway, are immediately recognisable as being from Jumanji. And I don't believe anyone's actually rolled the dice here at Prop Store, I really hope not. Uh, but if you're feeling adventurous, you could be the winning bidder and uh, give them a roll yourself and see what happens. Uh, if you do, they could be yours for about £8,000. <coughs> Uh, another piece for our music lovers out there. Uh, we've got a piece of Nirvana history. We have got Dave Grohl's handwritten set list from a Nevermind tour, uh, which does also come with a ticket stub. Definitely a cool piece of movie memorabilia. We have actually compared the handwriting on this page to other examples of Grohl's writing to assist in authenticating it. And there are some really great distinctive letters in there um, that, that match up. Uh, it's really good to see. And this actually is unusually a very neatly written set list. Uh, many of the other examples that we've seen uh, were clearly very hastily written. Although it is worth saying that this is uh, handwritten on the back of some Sheffield University paper uh, where the concert was held um, some manic moment before the uh, concert started. Uh, we are very lucky that the original owner had the foresight to grab the set list um, rather than see it end up in the bin. Um, and the estimate for this one is uh, about five to seven thousand pounds. Uh, do we have any questions? Ah, good question. Uh, so, do all the costume pieces come with a mannequin? Uh, you'll be able to see behind me, we've got uh, Robin, uh, the Phantom, and Supergirl, perhaps. Uh, those lots do actually come with their mannequins. Get out of the way of you there. <laughs> um, it's always worth reading the auction listings just to make sure, um, because other things like the, the Bishop costume next to it, that's simply put on a mannequin for us to display. Um, or present it for photography purposes. But if there is a display, we will very clearly uh, point it out in the listing. So, good question. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, okay, that's everything I've got to chat about today, but if you have any more questions, please do send them through to us at support at propstore.com. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you found out some more pieces, of, uh, more, uh, more information about the pieces I've chatted about today. Uh, the auction starts in just seven days uh, from the 3rd of November till the 6th. And we're going to be down at BAFTA headquarters uh, at 195 Piccadilly in central London. Everyone is welcome to come and join, whether you want to be bidding or just soak up some of the atmosphere, please do. Uh, don't forget to check out the full auction catalogue at propstore.com forward slash live auction. You can leave pre-bids uh, online right away. You can go online and uh, register for phone bidding or just drool over the 1500 lots that we've managed to uh, curate for you all this year. So hopefully we will see you all online or in person at some point next week. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching.